John. Sandra, let's now bring in Texas Congressman Michael McCall. He is a member of the House Cybersecurity Caucus, also a ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, good to see you this afternoon. At the end Thanks, of his John. remarks on coronavirus and the vaccine, President Biden was asked, will you retaliate against Russia for this latest ransomware attack? He responds, we're looking closely at this issue. The second question, do you think Putin is testing you? He responds, no. Do you think Putin is testing this president? Oh, ab absolutely. You cannot uh, somehow dissect Putin from these criminal organizations in Russia that carry out these ransomware attacks. It's all interrelated with the oligarchs in Russia. Uh, perhaps he didn't give direct approval, but certainly tacit approval. To say that Putin was unaware of this and doesn't benefit from these attacks, I think, is a very naive uh, uh, perspective of how Russia operates and who Putin really is. So uh, I think the president needs to be very forceful. This will be the third ransomware attack you know, in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, there ha we have to have consequences to this behavior. I'll ask you about those consequences in just a second. But, but first, he's got a summit with Putin coming up on June the 16th. Jen Psaki was asked by our Peter Ducey whether this would come up at that summit. Here's her response. This will certainly be a topic of discussion that uh, harboring criminal uh, entities that are intending to do harm, that are doing harm to the critical infrastructure in the United States is not acceptable. We're not going to stand by that. We will raise that and we are not going to take options off the table. Not going to take options off the table. So let's get to those options. What should the options be at this point? I think the president should be very clear uh, to Putin that if these continue, once we do the attribution, which means finding out the source of the attack, uh, that we are going to hit back and we're going we're to respond with a cyber offensive attack uh, that we're very capable of doing as a nation. Uh, only until we have that threat to uh, Putin and the Russian criminal organizations uh, will this uh, bad behavior uh, stop. Otherwise, it will, it will continue. Um, and, you know, what I don't understand is President Biden rewarding Putin with this meeting, rewarding him, uh, waiving the, uh, the national security interest to let him complete uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, while at the same time he's shutting down uh, the Keystone pipeline in the United States, now at attacking Alaskan drilling in the Arctic, um, and at the same time the Russians hit Colonial Pipeline and shut it down, causing a short-term energy crisis. This all doesn't add up, and I think the timing of the summit is very interesting. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things that people are asking is, should President Biden go ahead with this summit? You know, the way that you reward a dictator is to give him a platform on the world stage, and that's exactly what Putin is getting. And remember, this is the first um, meeting with a, a leader of a foreign country, in this case, a foreign adversary, uh, in their country, not in the United States. So it's a very significant uh, development, and I, I hope the president brings up uh, these issues, but the energy policy alone is the hypocrisy just mystifies me that we're going to be shutting down the Keystone pipeline, but allowing uh, Putin to uh, complete his pipeline into Europe, making them more energy dependent on Russia, not the United States. And it's a far dirtier uh, form of energy as well. You know, uh, you have probably seen that, that horrible video of that five year old who was abandoned at the border yesterday uh, that we have been showing on, on Fox News. And that, that brings me to another topic I wanted to discuss with you, and that is Governor Greg, Abbott's, uh, G Governor Greg Abbott's declaration of a disaster there in Texas as a result of the Biden immigration policies. I mean, certainly it's a tragedy when you look at this young boy screaming in the middle of the night as he's being left behind by the people who brought him to the border. But is it, is, is it a disaster? It's the worst, uh, John, I've ever seen it. I've been down to the border many times, uh, both as a federal prosecutor and as chairman of Homeland Security uh, Committee. It's the worst I've ever seen it. And, you know, they're talking about uh, 6,000 contacts uh, a day. Uh, this is absolutely out of control. My governor has declared it a disaster, uh, which will be helpful. But think about this. The president just terminated the Migrant Protection Program the very program that was working under President Trump, the Remain in Mexico and asylum agreements, he just terminated that program yesterday. Uh, this sends that message to the traffickers who really don't care about that little boy. Uh, they don't care about the little girls I've seen down there in tears 
without their parents not knowing where they are. All they care about is making money, 15 million a day, half a billion a month, you know, bringing these kids up, diverting Border Patrol from their, their real mission, mm -hmm. while they bring drugs and bad actors in through another part of the, the border. Uh, it is a crisis of proportions that I have not seen, I think, in my entire professional career. Thankfully, Border Patrol agents who weren't too far away heard that boy's plaintive wails and screams and, and came to his aid. Congressman Michael McCall of the great state of Texas, good to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Sandra?